Beside me are two very different EVs, and indeed, there are many differences. But today, I want to focus on one single major difference, and that is the charging standard. North America is a very interesting place. There are three different DC fast charging standards that coexist alongside each other. Today, let's discuss the differences, the development of all these different standards, and whether or not you can adapt between the different standards. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you to Electron for sponsoring today's video. Let's start our discussion with the Tesla charging standard, or now known as the North American charging standard. As the name suggests, this standard was invented by Lord Elon himself. The Tesla charging standard first entered the scene in 2012 with the introduction of the Model S, and was the proprietary charging standard for Tesla vehicles. Soon after, different places in the world pushed Tesla to conform to what is the most common standard locally. Examples of these include the EU, where all Tesla vehicles now use CCS2. And another example is China, where all Tesla vehicles use GBT. The stronghold of the Tesla charging standard remains in North America, where it is still the charging standard to this day. Tesla EVs in Japan and South Korea also use this proprietary standard. The plug itself is small and convenient since it uses the same plug for AC and DC charging. The two large pins on the top handle power delivery in both AC and DC. The CP and PP pins handle communication while the G pin handles grounding. There are two NACS standard versions. One supports up to 500 volts and one supports up to 1000 volts. Although there is no maximum current specified, Tesla had claimed that the connector was able to operate with 900 amps continuously. As of the making of this video, V3 and the V4 superchargers both max out at 250 kilowatts. V4 superchargers will likely be capable of higher power output in the future. In 2022, an evolution occurred to the Tesla charging standard. The change originated with the bipartisan infrastructure law passed by the US government, where if Tesla was to receive federal subsidies to build their charging network, they must make their chargers compatible with EVs from other brands. This is when Tesla charging standard became the North American charging system. The plug is exactly the same, and is backwards compatible with all Tesla EVs prior to the NACS. Whereas the Tesla charging standard used CAN bus to communicate, NACS uses ISO 15118 protocol, which is exactly the same as CCS. This essentially made NACS and CCS cross-compatible, where CCS EVs can theoretically charge on Tesla superchargers with an adapter. For Tesla EVs built after 2021, they can charge on CCS chargers using an adapter as well, one of which is made by Electron. Okay, it is time to show you how to charge your Tesla using a Electron CCS to NACS adapter. It is actually quite simple. So basically, first step, you take your CCS plug, then you put the CCS plug right into your Tesla's adapter, and then this NACS end goes into your vehicle, like so. Okay, and once that is in, you are ready to start charging. Now, why would you want such an adapter? Supercharger network coverage is actually pretty good nowadays, but there are still places where um, there are no superchargers, but there are CCS chargers. So if you want to take your Tesla and venture out to those places, you definitely need one of these adapters. Now make sure if you want to use this adapter, your Tesla is compatible with the CCS charging standard. That is usually any Tesla vehicle that comes out after 2021. So if you want to use one of these adapters, just make sure your Tesla is compatible. 
Of course, if you're interested in this product, we will have a link in the description below and click on that to see where you can buy one of these. Even though NACS was started as a proprietary standard for Tesla, it is going to be the future EV charging standard for all of North America. Ford is the first to announce that all their future EVs would come with NACS charge ports, and this announcement was made in 2023. Soon after, all manufacturers follow suit, making the same announcement that all their future EVs will have NACS ports. Rivian even showed off their R2 sporting an NACS port. By the looks of it, Tesla's NACS had won the North American charging standard war. Just because it looks like that NACS has won the war of charging standards in North America doesn't mean we can ignore the rest. Let's move on to the other leviathan of charging standard in North America, the CCS. CCS stands for Combined Charging System and found its beginning in the early 2010s by SAE and the European Automobile Manufacturers Association. The plan was to add DC connectors to the existing AC charging standard, and the first proposal for CCS was published in 2011. In late 2011, Audi, BMW, Daimler, Ford, GM, Porsche, and VW agreed to make CCS a reality in mid-2012. In June 2013, VW built the first CCS DC fast charger in Wolfsburg. It is important to note that there are two different types of CCS standards, Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 is used in North America and Japan, while Type 2 is used elsewhere, most notably in the European Union. As you can see, they have different pinouts. The two large pins in the lower portion are the positive and negative terminals during DC fast charging, while all the communication and AC power pins are contained in the upper portion. For the AC part of Type 1, L1 and N are used for AC power. For the same area of Type 2, L1, L2, L3, and N are used for AC power. Note that one difference between Type 1 and Type 2 is that the L1 pin in both allows for single-phase AC, while the L2 and L3 in Type 2 connector allows for three-phase AC. In both, the PP and CP pins are used for communication, while the PE, or protective earth, is used for grounding. Currently, the fastest CCS charger goes up to 400 kilowatts, while a 700 kilowatt CCS charger had been demonstrated. Vehicle to grid and vehicle to load functions are available for some CCS EVs, but not all. The CCS standard was adopted by the vast majority of non-Tesla automakers since its inception, and are by far the most numerous charging standard in North America besides Tesla's NACS. This will certainly change in the future, since all EV manufacturers announced that they will be switching to NACS. The third relevant DC fast charging standard is this, Chatamo. Chatamo began with a design by the Tokyo Electric Power Company in collaboration with manufacturers such as Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Subaru. The first commercial Chatamo DC fast charger was commissioned in 2009 alongside the release of the Mitsubishi iMeV. Chatamo became a published international standard in 2014. Its wide adoption was prevented by the European Union making the CCS their charging standard. However, Chatamo remained in many parts of the world. In North America, most DC fast chargers that are not Tesla superchargers will have at least one Chatamo plug. Oftentimes, each station has one CCS and one Chatamo. When you look into the charge port of a Chatamo EV, you will notice that the AC and DC charging plugs are entirely separate. The AC charging port the J7072 is exactly the same as the top part of the CCS. Let's take a look at the DC part of the charge port. The two large pins in the middle are the positive and negative terminals for DC power. The FG pin is used for grounding, and the rest of the pins are used for communication. The first gen Chatmo standard supports up to 500 volts at 125 amps, giving it a maximum charging speed of 62.5 kilowatts. Second gen Chatmo can support up to 400 kilowatts with 1000 volts at 
400 amps. The channel standard was built with V2L and V2G in mind early on. Many EVs with Chadmo are capable of both of these functions. In North America, Chadmo EVs are the minority when it compares to NACS and CCS. Models of EVs that use Chadmo mostly come from Japanese automakers. These include the Nissan Leaf, first generation Kia e Soul, Mitsubishi iMeef, and Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Even so, all the newest EVs from Japanese automakers like the Nissan Aria, Toyota BZ4X, and Subaru Solterra have switched to CCS. Because vehicles like the Leaf and the Outlander PHEVs are fairly popular EVs, Chatmo will still be around for the foreseeable future. Now that we have discussed the historical and technical aspects of the three different charging standards in North America, you may be asking yourself, can I charge my EV using a charging plug that is different than the receptacle? And the answer is yes. Welcome to the wonderful world of DC fast charging adapters. Tesla EVs can charge on the CCS plug using a CCS to NACS adapter. As you have seen earlier in the video, a CCS compatible Tesla vehicle can charge using a CCS plug as long as you have an adapter. The important thing to remember is that your Tesla needs to be new enough, uh, year 2021 or newer. Tesla vehicles can also charge on the Chadmo plug, and this feature had been available for a very long time. The adapter became available around 2014, which adapts Chadmo to the Tesla charging standard. This adapter had been discontinued in Canada, but seems to be available in Australia. It is quite pricey, and this adapter has limited charging speed of 43 kilowatts, which is pretty slow. Since the CCS adapter will allow for much faster charging, the Chadmo to Tesla adapter is now obsolete. CCS EVs can use NACS plugs on the Tesla superchargers, either through an adapter attached to the charger or an external adapter. There are a handful of V3 superchargers in North America that comes with a magic dock attached to the charger, which adapts NACS to CCS1 to allow any CCS EVs to use the supercharger. However, this type of superchargers are still very few in number across North America, and you can't find magic docks on most superchargers. Here is where third-party external adapter comes in. A few EV manufacturers have agreements in place to allow their EVs to charge on superchargers if the EV drivers bring their own NACS to CCS adapter. Ford is currently in the process of sending such an adapter to the owners of their EVs so that they could theoretically charge on any superchargers. So far, Tesla officially only supports supercharging Ford and Rivian EVs using their own adapters. Can you charge your CCS EV on Chatmo? Does such an adapter even exist? Well, after an extensive search, I could not find a Chatmo to CCS adapter. The closest thing I could find is a GBT to CCS adapter, but GBT is definitely not the same as Chatmo. When you step back and think about it, the non-existence of this adapter makes sense. Wherever you have a Chatmo charger, there are either equal or greater numbers of CCS chargers. There will almost never be a scenario where charging your CCS EV on Chatmo is more convenient than simply charging on CCS. Last but not least, let's talk about Chatmo EVs. Which other charging standards can they use? Very recently, CCS to Chatmo adapters came to the market, to the joy of many Leaf owners. Some of these adapters could be found on Chinese marketplaces like Alibaba. A to Z also makes such an adapter, and it's really pricey. Reviews and reports on how reliably these adapters work are still sparse. In the distant future, 
we do not know if Chatham is still going to support it when NACS takes over. Perhaps such an adapter will become useful at that time. Either way, there is a way for channel EVs to charge using CCS. What about charging a channel EV using NACS? So far, I could not find an NACS to channel adapter. And even if there is one, compatibility will be dependent on Tesla. I had the idea that if we combine a NACS to CCS adapter with a CCS to Chatham adapter, maybe there's a small chance that this could work. Well, joking aside, there is currently no direct way to charge a Chatham vehicle using a Tesla supercharger's NACS. As you can see, the North American charging standard situation is a little bit of a mess. There's the NACS, there's CCS, there's Chatham. Hopefully, 5 to 10 years from now, as promised by all the EV manufacturers, all the EVs in North America will be sharing the NACS standard, and everybody can use all chargers all the time. For now, the simple rule to follow is, if you have a Tesla vehicle, almost always use a supercharger. That's the most convenient. If you have a non-Tesla EV, use any charger that is not a supercharger. If you like what we do and you want to support our channel, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more electric vehicle content. My name is Solomon, and we will see you on the next one.